All right, we're right at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, so we're going to go ahead and get started. First off, good morning. Again, I'm Tiffany, Membership Director at America Makes, and I'll be your host for today's America Makes TRX webinar series. A little background on this series before I introduce our speaker. As America Makes continues its mission to expand and accelerate the footprint of additive manufacturing and 3D printing, we've created this platform called the America Makes Technical Review and Exchange Webinar Series in an effort to enable the additive manufacturing and 3D printing community to come together and share knowledge and experience with the broader industry. A few important notes before we kick things off today. At the end of the presentation, there will be an opportunity for a brief Q&A session. If during the presentation you have a question, please submit it into the Q&A box in the lower right-hand corner of your WebEx screen. All questions will be saved and then we'll discuss them during the Q&A session. Moving right along, today's TRX webinar series will be pre presented by Dr. Nima Mozami. Dr. Mozami is a scientist from the AlphaStar Corporation. His focus is on developing additive manufacturing methods, specifically in thermal modeling, in situ monitoring, and identifying temperature dependencies in 3D printing process. He received his integrated master's degree and PhD degree in the mechanical engineering from the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom. And during his presentation today, he will focus on addressing warpage and manufacturing defects in your additive manufacturing build. Dr. Mazami will also present Genoa 3DP's design to print simulation solution with a specific focus on visualizing defects and predicting warpage, fault spots, residual stresses, and deformation during the additive manufacturing processes and the effect of defects on part performance and qualification. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to hand it over to Dr. Mazami. Hi, uh, thank you so much, uh, Tiffany, uh, for the introduction, and thank you for everyone uh, attending uh, the webinar. Uh, so let me go to the next slide. Uh, our agenda today is we show actually uh, the problems and key challenges in AM 3D printing process, uh, Alpha Star, ICME, AM simulation cases, and uh, the methodology that we use to predict the defects, uh, anomalies, bullet spots, uh, uh, the way that we calculate the residual stress deformation. Uh, and uh, I carry on to the ca case studies, different case studies uh, were selected uh, for today to, in order to calculate the bullet spot anomalies by path coverage software. And the model is open hull plates made uh, of uh, ABS polymer. And also detect and visualize the bullet spots, voids, and calculate the roughness. Uh, for 10 coins and the material made of Incanal 718 and predict the roughness and residual stress using the boxes, three different sizes and show you the shrinkage, the roughness uh, and uh, the formation uh, and also the material made of Incanal 718, predict the thermal history, melt pool, heat affected zone, material state which are density, volume of solid, void as well as the process map, which is uh, power, speed uh, versus temperature, which is really important in order to predict different phenomena during the 3D printing process, such as balling, humping, stable region, and unstable region uh, during the 3D printing process. And the material, actually we have a powder bed, and the material is the titanium and stainless steel, two different validation uh, studies that we're gonna show you today. And also the last one uh, will be the prediction of the warpage and residual stress for the mount ring case and material is uh, in Canal 718. So the problem in metal powder, uh, we actually have different uh, defects and uh, the parts we need co qualified and certified and it has to be investigated, which is unfused powder. Uh, that can uh, happen during 3D printing based on the power and speed range. So when we have a low power and uh, high speed, we have unfused powder. Uh, and the balling uh, phenomena, gas pores, and the lamination as well as swelling. These are the symptoms uh, occurring during the 3D printing process for metal powder. And it causes the intergranular crack as well as the surface crack, as you can see here and here. And it creates a good part and bad part. As you can see, this is the good part. This one is the bad part, though, uh, with the wrinkles. And this one is the wrinkle uh, as well as surface cracks. 
and also it causes the roughness net shaped and shrinkage as you can see on the top part two left boxes which one is thin and th tall thick and tall and also uh, thick and small which you can see uh, clearly uh, that these has to be investigated to make sure that the part is qualified and uh, the inherent defects resulting from the AM process cause lack of a stable process and it tends to produce parts with inconsistent tolerance and also effect of defects uh, we can uh, emphasize on the high residual stresses these are the symptoms and it has to be corrected and surface roughness voids and cracks oxidation and inconsistent density as well as anisotropic microstructure and mechanical behavior which we're going to discuss today so uh, this, uh, tra this chart actually shows the big data observation visualization by AMCQ software, which is this one, this one, and here also uh, as well. Uh, so these are the problems. So we actually uh, go through, let me just uh, click on the video. This one shows the mesh generation element-wise of the chamber liner example, and the material is in canal 718, and you can see how the gen mesh generated. And then, then we use the mesh uh, as well as the G code in order to show the anomalies and this one shows the anomalies intensity uh, for 3,300 layers and each layer has uh, about uh, 3,000, uh, 3 million uh, powders. Uh, so it's basically 3 million of data will be processed and that's the, one of the main advantage of the MCMQ software that can uh, do uh, which we use uh, in in-situ monitoring and also this one shows the anomaly size where you can zoom in and see what is the percentage or let's say volume uh, void volume ratio at each specific location of interest and this one shows the single layer as well as the multi-layer that you can use AMSIMQ software to visualize the roughness detect and visualize show the roughness as well as the elevation so as you can see in the left, uh, below, below left, uh, it shows the, it can be, you know, a different view and resolution. You can zoom in and see where, what is the elevation, what is the roughness at each specific location. And also this shows the anomalies and bald spots uh, in one uh, simple specimen. So our first are ISME uh, AM simulation cases. We have uh, we actually uh, classified uh, into two categories: composites and metal. For composites, uh, we uh, had the 3D printed Shelby car from our Regional Lab to minimize the delamination, which has been done um, perfectly to minimize the delamination during the printing process. And multi-material model, which was uh, Altem Tantan and then silver. Uh, uh, which predicted the diffusion and inclusion and uh, that was the aim of this study. And we had wing uh, made of uh, thermoplastics uh, which predicted the lamination and coefficient thermal uh, 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 expansion and this one shows the crack at this part. And also ceramic part from the binder jet uh, to predict the P and investigate, you know, ass uh, assess the voids and uh, chemical reactions during the 3D print process. And for the metal cases, we had the UAV wing uh, made of titanium designed stress free support structure uh, to minimize the weight uh, of the part and, you know, the support structure. And this one uh, on the middle. Uh, it's a heated chamber nozzle, a mating canal in, for in situ roughness, and uh, like I said, the 3,300 layers, and each layer consists of the 3,000, uh, around 3,000 um, uh, powder. And this one is the mounting in canal 718 to predict and minimize the roughness warpage, a base plate, and support design uh, weight. And also the conformal hex steel uh, weight minimization and thickness and leakage was the main uh, study uh, and the goal for this case. And also we had boxes uh, made of internal roughness and nature were investigated to minimize the roughness and net shape. So the methodology uh, is to actually, in order to predict the ball spot anomalies, we use the path coverage software. The input is the G code and FE mesh, which can be Abacus uh, or ANSYS. 
and the output is going to be ball spots, anomalies ratio, and automated degraded material properties per element, which gives the user to in order to uh, enhance the model and uh, get a better results based on the uh, material properties degradation, which is the stiffness and the strength. So the, this is the flow chart of the process. We have the G-code, which can be in a riprap form, and we're using the 3D printing simulation, Genoa uh, 3DP, uh, to generate the printing uh, printer path file. And then we use the mesh. So these are the inputs to the path coverage, which is the 2D uh, visualization and can be used to predict and detect the uh, anomalies, which I'm going to discuss here. And the output is going to be boundary path as well as the ball spot uh, ratio file. And then you can use this in AmSync software, which is single layer and multi layer mode. And in a multi layer mode, you can visualize it in 3D. So, this is the uh, Bosch example, which is ABS polymer, and shows you a top layer and anomalies uh, around the edge here, around the circle, and around the edge of uh, this side. And it shows and predicted uh, in AmSync, in path coverage software, uh, when we calculate the ball spot anomaly. And this one uh, shows uh, the car example, of, uh, which shows the ball spot here and here, same as the Bosch example. And this one is the capability of the Genoa 3DP to show the mesh generation and the G code. And this one is the global local modeling uh, interactive approach that we use. So this is the global model. We take it to the local and use the thermal and structural boundary conditions and do thermal analysis and copper thermal structural FC simulation, which the time depends on the laser speed. And it shows the damage elements, the stress field, that we take it into account and update the material properties, map it the stress field into the global model. And then in that case, we update the material for next FC iteration, which may need extra FC iteration to reach equilibrium. So let's go to the uh, case studies. The first one is the path coverage. We show the problems and solutions. The first case study is the ball spot prediction. Path coverage predicts ball spot anomalies. So like I said, the input is only G-code and FE mesh from Abacus and ANSI, and the output is ball spot ratio and automated degraded material properties, the strength, the stiffness uh, per element. And this one shows from 0 to 100% ball spot ratios uh, that you can see is a color-coded map from 0 to 100 and shows uh, the critical regions and problematic regions that you need to uh, focus on. And this one is the zoom in uh, of this part. And you can see about 41 percent here, 26, 19, and so on. So you can see where is the problematic region um, using the path coverage tool. Uh, so we use that uh, calculated ball spot anomalies in, in order to defect, uh, effect, uh, to show the effect of defects on the part performance. That's all we need to do. And we use it for the validation case studies for the Bosch example for this plate, open hall plate with different circles and square shapes uh, size. And uh, we, we, we were able to uh, predict the low displacement curve, and it was in good agreement, both deformation and low displacement curve, as you can see, load versus displacement. Uh, and also, these are shows, um, the, as you can see, these are the damages and, uh, you know, where it deforms. You can uh, see the simulation results we have here and here, and also it shows in uh, Genoa 3DP, uh, you know, it shows, you know, that there is also the damages here, uh, as happened in the actual part, and other um, places as well. And in this one, the advantage of uh, Genoa 3DP shows that the different type of uh, damages, and also the contribution of each. For example, for this case, it shows that the longitudinal change size and transfer sensor uh, have the most uh, significant effect on the, the part deformation and uh, it's the main reason of the failure and damage. So these are the damage criteria as well as the percentage of each.
So let me, I think, yeah, we have one demo here. If I go back to the demos, so we have four demos for today. The first one is the path coverage. Let me. Okay, so as you can see, this is the Genoa software platform. You have a structure uh, that you can use in order to analyze and do the analysis. So you can uh, use the 3D printing analysis and mesh model generator. So you just right click and open the mesh generator here. Uh, so let me stop this. So here you can use different um, FPM solver, abacus analysis, and different additive methods, which can be BAM, FDM, as well as laser power bed fusion. And also what you need is, let me go a little bit further. Okay, so what you need is the geometry uh, input file, which is the G code, and you can change the offset uh, in X, Y, and Z axis, which by default is zero, and you have a bit width. Uh, and different number of division in X and Y. Also, you need uh, the external mesh, uh, or it can be, uh, internal mesh also can be used here. So, uh, also you need the material properties, which uh, we generate from the uh, MCQ software, uh, temperature dependent material properties, and we use, it, uh, we use the path coverage to degrade the material properties. And then uh, for the model, you need different uh, parameters such as lumped element, conversion time ratio, which needs to be consistent with the G-code time, the time of the printing, and uh, other parameters as you can see. Uh, and also you need information about the bottom plates such as the surface temperature and the thickness, number of divisions, etc. So let me go a little bit forward. So here, what it happens, uh, if once you export the model, if I go back a little bit, uh, when you export the model, okay, here. So you, can, you have an option to export the model. When you export the model, you have the thermal uh, model as well as the coupled structural thermal model as well that you can analyze. And then uh, the next is the path coverage. Once you export the model, you have the files to run the path coverage using the G-code and mesh uh, in order to calculate the ball spot. And then you can visualize it in 3D with AmpsMQ software. So this file that I showed here is actually the IMP file for the thermal and structural, which shows the temperature dependent material properties here. And then, as I, like I said, if you run the path coverage, you can click on here and you can either calculate the ball spots for the current layer or all the layers. So all the layers takes more time, but one layer so would be faster, and this uh, demo show you the one layer only. So the, as you can see, the ball spots calculator everywhere in each layer for each element. And you can easily see uh, what is the percentage of the uh, void uh, in each uh, elemental area. And you can zoom in, go to the specific location, and these are actually shows the mesh uh, that you can easily can be seen here. And also, I will show you later uh, the printing path that you can m go uh, forward and backward to see the different uh, printing paths. And then you can run the AmpSimQ software based on the calculated ball spots to see the 3D map. And you can zoom, change the view, you know, t this is the top view, and then you can easily see what is the critical and problematic areas. The red one shows the highest value of the volume void ratios, and which is here, which is, can be seen here and other areas. So once you've done that, uh, then the next step is you can use the, the ball spot calculator to map it uh, to degrade the executable file to generate the to generate the volume ratio, and uh, it also automatically uh, generates the elemental set uh, with the different volume ratios that calculated by the path coverage. So this one shows the material properties, and if you go further down you will see different, yeah, here, 
different percentage of the volume ratio. Uh, I cannot see from here. I don't know if this is clear. But yeah, it shows from 0% to 100% void volume ratio. It can be 5%, 10%, 25%, and so on. So let me go faster. And then, uh, yeah, and this one shows uh, the, you know, the, the thermal profile. You can see the stress analysis and then stress results uh, and residual stresses as well as the deformation, uh, as you can see. And then you can uh, go to the service loading and see where the damage is and where the deformation. And then you can go to the Genoa software to, uh, for the further analysis. Okay. Okay, for surface roughness, uh, the problems and the solutions. This is the case study for 10 coins. We, as you can see, this is the, the first one shows the coins printed uh, made uh, of Inca 718. Various p uh, power and speed were selected for each coin. Uh, and the G code patterns anomalies shows here. So the, the problematic area due to the G code, bad G code, and then void ball spot ratio here and here. Uh, and we map it to the global uh, modeling, which is thermal distribution for one coin, as you can see, deformation after the print, as well as the residual stress. And we take it to the local model in order to predict the roughness and diffusional creep. And then uh, further studies uh, have done uh, for the probabilistic analysis and simulation to compare the simulation results versus the experiment. And as you can see, this is the PDF, probability density function for the roughness test versus simulation. The red is simulation, the blue is the test, and shows the, how satisfactory results are. And then we take it to the probabilistic sensitive analysis to see what is the, uh, uh, what is the mm, like effect of uh, different and critical parameters on the roughness, for example. So the power shows uh, the inverse effect uh, has a higher effect compared to speed, 88%, 47%, m minus, and, you know, it's inverse and it's a direct effect. And this one shows uh, the big data-driven roughness visualization. So this one is unfiltered voxels for roughness calculation. Uh, the each coin has the one centimeter diameter, 40 layers uh, of the power bed, and it's the Incana 7188. And the threshold filters automatically, as you can see here, applied after roughness computation. And this one shows the elevation. And we use elevations and standard deviation and coefficient of variation in order to show the roughness at the high le le next level. Uh, and also, this next case study was the ball spot prediction, which was the same coins. So uh, the past coverage detects the problematic region ball spot anomalies, examine the GCO quality before the build. So before we, be, uh, we build the part, we examine the GCO. And as you can see here, it observed the error around the edges for the coin D, which is here. And we can see it in the demo um, a little bit later. And this one shows uh, also, based on our simulation and studies, it shows that the coin now A, has the swelling and because of the extremely high energy inputs as you can see and also this one coin f uh, has a lack of fusion and uh, which causes no uh, which shows the no consistency with the melt pools and giving a diffuse surface finish uh, similar to sintered powder and these are the 10 coins that printed by the atlas uh, from university of dayton uh, so let me go quickly to show you demo. So these are the uh, actually the single layer profilometer data, as I ex explained. And the single layer profilometer data can be uh, either elevation or the roughness data. So you can use the elevation points to calculate the roughness for each coin. This is the single layer, and it shows you uh, the uh, one coin. And as you can see, if I go further okay so basically it calculates it's a, it has a, about the 5 million uh, powder data uh, in one single layer 
and different coins with different power and speed and we use design of experiment using a surrogate model and uh, case up in order to optimize the roughness by changing the power and the speed so you can zoom into the particular region if i go further down yeah you can zoom into the particular region and this one shows based on the color coded map it shows where are the highest value of the roughness and elevation point so this shows the highest value of the elevation and here and here so you can easily see and you can change the resolution to have a better view of what is going on and shows that around the perimeters there are uh, more uh, the, the, it's actually it's a hot area that shows the higher roughness so I have to be quicker here and this one you can uh, and these uh, circular lines also I forgot to mention that shows the um, the actually the, these rings shows the, uh, the, the the area of the coin and around the perimeter show the higher roughness so these are the main area of interest we calculate the global roughness perimeter uh, around the perimeter and uh, around the circle and all uh, all places so let me go back a little bit and this one you can actually calculate all of those I mentioned global roughness uh, perimeter and other roughness you can see the upper threshold and lower threshold uh, which you can set it uh, uh, it's a user defined and you can as you can see it is 20 percent upper threshold and seven percent lower threshold so you can uh, you know more focus on the main region and problematic area so this is about uh, the AMSIM cube single layer and also this one is the next uh, demo so if I go further which I explain here I want to show you uh, what is the g-code problem that you can uh, define uh, by the path coverage so here shows you know there is a ball spot around the perimeter which is uh, actually uh, typical in 3d printing but if we zoom in into the coin D you can see there is a very high I mean some risky problem here uh, in a pre um, perimeter printing path and if I go further down you can see that you can move the printing path yeah here the red one so you can easily go through the printing path from one and it shows the number value here from one to whatever number I mean number of printing paths that you have to find that printing path number in that particular layer from 0 to 10 for example you can see which layer has the problem if you go further to the other layers you will see there is no other problem in that coin so the next one is the roughness in a meta problem is the boxes as you can see this is the base plate removal issue and shows the residual stress deformation shrinkage and temperature redistribution after removing the base plate so this is the temperature distribution the formation at the end and shows you know high uh, the shrinkage and the residual stress high the formation at the top and also the build volume is 20 by 10 by 1 inches part is in color 718 and base plate stainless steel and it shows uh, the rough part criteria by 1.143 uh, millimeter and this is the redistribution of the residual stress while removing the bottom plate and this is the part qualification so we used our, the analysis that we have done in the previous slide to, uh, to qualify the part and, and this one shows uh, the, uh, the residual stress while removing the clamps and we have a global model this one shows the red region shows the surface roughness zone and we take it to the local model like I said and these are shows the grain and grain boundary and uh, also we can use the uh, local model to predict the surface roughness and the prediction shows 40 by 80 um, micron deformation and this one is from the experiment which is 50 micron in a satisfactory result uh, and this one uh, shows the global and local model so we have a global model we use this one uh, in order to do the grain modeling and void and oxidation initiation propagation and shows the residual stress so we have a global model 
and different locations as you can see these elements and we go to the local here and then we take it here to predict the voids and oxidation and also the residual stress at the local level and this one also shows the oxidation and diffusion of creep so as you can see it shows the grain growth and the problem related to the oxidation so the next one uh, which is really important is the prediction of the void ratios and solutions that we have here so basically we developed a zero order model well, in our thermal management, uh, so the code uh, can predict the six different regions that laser uh, three. Uh, heating, melting, melt, superheated, and uh, superheated cooling, solidification, as well as cooling period. And also we can uh, detect and predict the heat affected zone and the melt pool. Heat affected zone is here and the melt pool shows uh, on the right bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. And it shows the shape and size so width versus deep, uh, depth of the melt pool. And uh, it, this is the step, as you can see, heating, melting, all the periods shown here through the thickness and shows the area that is not melted. And we have a two, any two layers. The first four is the powder base section and solid base, so both can be predicted. And the next one shows the prediction of the zeroth order model code uh, to pre uh, that can be used to predict the dynamic process map, uh, which is power uh, versus uh, velocity and temperature. And you can easily click on any uh, region and see based on what, based on the speed and power that you have, what is the temperature and what region you are in. So if we have a no melting, incomplete melting. Other phenomena such as boiling, overheating, humping, and stable can be detected here. So basically, defects in powder bed depending on the powder and the speed. So when you have a defect, means that you have no melting. So if you can predict the no melting region, then you can see where is the defect, and uh, with what power and the speed you can, uh, uh, in what region you have a problem. So surface roughness, if there is a partial melting, boiling, when you have a small melt superheated pumping intermediate melt superheated and a stable track when you have a large melt superheated and this one shows the test uh, result from the process map PV and shows the boiling and humping that we validated with our model here for the stainless steel uh, material and this one shows the material state by material state I mean uh, the volume of solid the void and density changes so this one shows the status and regions uh, which I explained in the previous slide, you have a melt superheated, melting, cooling, superheating, and then solidification, cooling, and heating. So all the regions, as the laser moves, uh, it melts the, uh, each element. So this is the element wise, and as you can see, the size of each element is 20 by 20 by 32 micron, and the elements, uh, uh, the each uh, plate, has 80 by 31 and two elements uh, and the melting temperature is 14 15 so based on that the melting temperature you can calculate the transient temperature profile and different regions volume of solid uh, changes which is the transient change during the 3d printing process and you can predict the void volume ratios based on the volume of solid and density changes and the temperature and this one shows the problematic region based on the prediction and it can predict where are the unfused powder and surface roughness and other regions that I show you later. So basically, with the power low power and speed 0.3 mm per second, we show that there is a partial melting here, which causes the surface roughness. And you can see this one is higher than the melt temperature, 14, 15 centigrade. Uh, and this one, since it did, doesn't, didn't reach that value, so there was no melting and causes the unfused powder. So you can basically play with the power and speed and other parameters in order to uh, solve the problem and find the solutions. What is the best uh, uh, parameters that we can use to avoid those regions? And this is the melt pool size based on this power and speed for the partial melt. And this is the temperature history on the top, let's say, heat affected zone. And this one, as you can see, there was no melt. So here is the effect of porosity and laser power on melting. And as you can see, and these two shows the effect of powder porosity on temperature versus time. This is temperature, this is time, 
and it shows for different prostate 50 percent 55 and 60 and shows the higher the value of the prostate uh, the uh, lower the male's full duration so it's uh, basically it melts faster so this one also clearly shows that as the prostate goes up the melting duration goes down and this one shows the effect of powder prostate uh, sorry, the powder prostate was 50% in here and scan a speed of 300 millimeter per second and shows the effect of the laser power this time, which is from 350 to 450. And also this one, as we increase the laser power, we have a shorter melt uh, duration. And this one clearly shows this here too. And also for the warpage problems, you know, we have we had a case study here, and it shows the warpage and residual stress uh, prediction. So it's uh, the stress builds up, leads to the bracket, and supports warpage. As you can see, this is the actual part, and here shows the clearly where, where the warpage, and this is our simulation, which predicts the warpage and residual stress during the simulation. So warpage uh, actually eliminated through the simulation by design of experiment using KSOP and SMOP. Uh, improve the support design and optimize the build part to reduce the residual stress and avoid the warpage. And these are the optimized build uh, changes, which were market speed increase, hatch spacing increase, and also the hatch shift layer to the layer the, to avoid the overlap. And we increase the support thickness. And this shows the, so that was first build part, shows the warpage. This is the third build part after the optimization and shows the lower residual stresses as well as the smoother part without the warp. Mm -hmm. And this one shows the simulation and shows the temperature gradient and history during 3D printing. So let me go to the next slide. And this is the, our approach, as I explained, design of experiment to optimize the support structure. The weight reduced by 22%, which is very good. And residual stress was less than the yield strength. So the lower the residual, the better the part. And that's what we achieved here. So these are the temperature before and after. This is for the new part. This is for the old part. As you can see, the structure was different here based on the design of experiment so that we achieve the 22% less of material. As you can see, we have more stuff here and the support structure. And then we have a new part, residual stress, and old part shows much lower residual stress compared to the old part. And these are the new design machine parameters, two cases. The first one is the temperature. So it shows the different parameters, temperature, printing time, and laser power uh, for two different cases. And these are the roughness values, shows the better uh, roughness uh, for the case one lower value and these are the local models as I mentioned to sh uh, mm, uh, to investigate the roughness and predict it to minimize uh, and this is the deformation after the optimization and net shape so let me uh, go I forgot to show you the last uh, demo which was based on the material state voice volume ratio so basically these are the transient states this six distinct heating stages. Uh, like I said, melt superheating, melting, superheating, cooling, solidification, and cooling, and so on. So the, basically, this is the zero soda model uh, algorithm, and the flowchart shows the material properties. These are the inputs, laser parameters, and typical input is here. Simulation parameters, model resolution, report options. So you can you know, extract the information at the end for the post-processing. And this is the zone model. So these are the inputs and the outputs are time history, melt pool, heat affected zone, temperature profile, void, VOS, volume of solid and state. Uh, and also you can map it to the AMSIMQ software to visualize it in 3D as I showed you earlier. And then you can uh, also define a process map, uh, power versus speed and temperature to show us different region and find the stable and unstable region at the end. So let me go further down. Uh, okay, so these are actually two layers of the printing and show the temperature, sorry, the state as you move the laser uh, for the single track uh, for the stainless steel uh, case. And you can easily zoom in to the particular area. 
if I go faster and then you can see for example these are the area that is melted and these are the high uh, temperature region which is the melt superheating region and then these are the superheating cooling as the laser moves so based on the absorption radiation uh, from the laser and the Gaussian distribution that is our methodology for this code shows the axial and radial distribution of the powder of the power laser power and this one shows the temperature during the 3D printing. So it shows the heat affected zone. And if I go further, and it shows the cooling, and then, you know, at the end, it uh, shows the all temperature color bar color. And this is the void. Um, if I go back a little bit, sorry. Yeah. So it shows the void changes during the 3D printing, so for the only single track. So basically you can move the laser whichever you, wherever you want in any location uh, and then uh, you can uh, define, um, like I said, we have a material properties that you can use in the model and you can play with it and use a different number of uh, layers and, uh, you know, other stuff. Thank you so much for listening. This is the end of presentation. Well, thank you, Dr. Mozami, for that presentation. We're going to go ahead and head into our Q&A session. Again, for the audience, if you have a question you haven't already done so, please enter it into the Q&A box on the lower right hand corner of your screen. I apologize, you may not have been able to hear me. Um, thank you again, Dr. Mozami, for that presentation. We're going to head into the Q&A session. Um, again, for the audience, if you haven't already done so, please type any questions that you may have into the Q&A box on the lower right-hand corner of your screen. I'll just give it a second here to see if any questions come through. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and get this kicked off. In the beginning of your presentation, you discussed bald spots and abnormalities. Um, can you discuss how to degrade the properties for 100% bald spot? Okay, so um, let me go back to... Okay, so basically uh, the methodology is like this. So we actually discretize it into, two, uh, into different regions. So from, let's say, um, from 0 to 100, we have like 5%, 10%, 15%, uh, or let's say 90%. So we calculate the ball spot based on the 90% volume ratio. So uh, the degraded material properties for 100% is basically uh, similar to what we have for the 90 percent. So it depends on the way that we discretize the range. Uh, so for one, for the 100 percent, we use the 90 percent uh, for the de to degrade the stiffness and the strength material properties. Okay, great. Um, I did have a question come in, and can you perform a warpage analysis on FDM parts? Yeah, uh, for the for the warpage, yes, actually, uh, you can we can actually predict for the FDM, uh, for the laser power bed fusion, uh, and these are uh, what we have done for the mounting. Uh, so the mounting that I showed you, uh, we first have done the FDM process, and then we uh, we for the next level we actually went to the uh, laser power fusion bed bed fusion. So the answer is yes. Wonderful. Now, how good is your predictive tool to compute surface roughness? So, uh, for the uh, surface roughness, we actually show the validation uh, case study. So, if I go uh, up, it shows the surface roughness. For example, this one, since we actually use the interactive global local modeling, so basically, we use the local model grain grain boundary to predict the surface roughness. And as we can see, we have we actually have many uh, validation case studies, and this is one of the uh, examples from the Raytheon 
uh, missile defense agency and it shows the very good match uh, measured surface roughness on the right side and it predicted in the middle bottom uh, part shows the uh, 40 to 80 percent 80, 80 microns so it's a very good uh, tool uh, in order to predict the roughness warpage and you know residual stress deformation and all other stuff that needs to be done during 3d printing process okay great so the next question is, what is the advantage of your zeroth order mo model compared to other FEM tools? Okay, this is actually a question um, many uh, times they ask me. Uh, so the fact is, for the zeroth order model, the first advantage compared to other FEM model, uh, FEM tool, is actually the uh, computational time. So it is much uh, less than other FEM uh, tools, uh, FEM tools that uh, can you know calculate uh, the entire. Um, for example, for this case, we have a 22 layers. It took about we had actually <laughs> verification by Abacus, uh, and that one took about like 20, uh, I believe 18, 18 or 20 minutes. But uh, this zero holder model like, uh, only took about uh, le uh, less than a second, it was 0.18 seconds to calculate the uh, temperature history. So this is the one advantage compared to other models. And also it shows all the regions, as you can see, it shows the heating, melting, melt superheating, and uh, so on. And also uh, we can show the unstable, stable regions, we can predict the voice, density, material state, and all the important phenomena like humping and balling can be predicted by zeroth order model. So these are the main advantages so far. Okay, and I have one last question here for you. How can you improve or eliminate warpage? Okay, so if I go back here, uh, so we actually use the design of experiment using different approach, which is surrogate model optimization technique, which is the meta model uh, approach, and it is based on the sampling points, which is I believe Halton uh, Halton sampling uh, way that we use in order to uh, optimize. Uh, the parameters such as speed and power, which are more most important parameters during the 3D printing, and we use those uh, uh, parameters to optimize and use the techniques that we had here as shown to minimize the warpage. Okay, it looks like we have another question that just came through. This one says, with software predicting distortion slash warpage of design part, is there anything within this software or other softwares that provides compensation analysis for design part to account for the deformation slash warpage? So uh, basically, uh, for the deformation and warpage, uh, well, the question was, is there any other software? Could you please repeat the question again? Sure. Um, with the software predicting distortion, warpage of design part, is there anything within this software or other softwares that may provide compensation analysis for design part to account for the deformation or warpage? So basically what we actually uh, have here, yeah, these are the main, let me go to the first slide. So uh, basically what the main uh, criteria that we investigate and uh, use here is that, for example, is we predict the defects and also we predict the warpage and minimize it. We predict the ball spot volume ratio, residual stress, deformation, and all this stuff, melt pool, heat effect zone, everything about the thermal history, material state, and process map so that you can use different parameters uh, if I show you here. So, these are the facts, defects that existing during the 3D printing. So we are trying to minimize, we actually done uh, this in the past, so minimize the residual stress, surface roughness, void and cracks, oxidation, and so on. 
So these are the examples that we show and these are the symptoms that we investigate. So all these facts actually were investigated uh, at all five star using the, our software to general 3D printing um, and encountering the um, uh, MCQ software which predict the material uh, temperature dependent material properties. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's the question. Uh, that's actually the answer. So yes, we predict all these uh, phenomena and defects during 3D printing uh, using our software. Okay, great. I'm and just going to give it another. Oh, just, go ahead. Just one quick thing, and actually, we have a different case study and uh, tutorials uh, that they are very welcome to you know um, to go through them. If they want, they can just contact and um, ask for it or request for more information. So we have a different validation case studies, material database uh, for polymer, for metal, ceramic, everything. And uh, yeah, that's it. Sorry <laughs> for interrupting. Okay. Yeah, no, that was, that was a, a good little piece of information to share. I'm going to go ahead and just wait a minute or two just to see if any more questions come through. Now, if they wanted to request um, those tutorials or those studies that you mentioned, will they just contact you directly? Uh, yes, uh, actually, Sarah knows her. So, yes, they have to, they can contact me. So, my, actually, we don't have my email here, right? So, uh, yeah, they can contact Alpha Star uh, for more information. And uh, my email also is Nima, my first name, at alphastarcorp.com. So, very simple. Okay. Wonderful. And for those on the line, um, if you are interested in those and you're, you're not able to direct him, um, or I'm sorry, send him an email directly, you can always reach out to me and I'll, I'll connect you also. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, I don't see any other questions coming through, so I think we're going to go ahead and conclude today's TRX webinar series. So again, thank you again for the presentation and to the entire AlphaStar team. It's always a pleasure working with you guys. Um, if there's any further questions, like I said, for Dr. Mozami, please feel free to contact him directly at NIMA, that's N-I-M-A at alphastarcorp.com, or you can reach out to me and I will make that connection for you. Um, once we conclude today, there will be a post-webinar survey going out, so if you have any feedback or suggestions on how we can make these webinars more success successful, please feel free to share that with me. All right, well, thank you again, and we look forward to doing this again soon. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for giving this opportunity, and uh, have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Bye.